When preparing for a method feeder session, it's not just important to get your end tackle correct, your feeders, your rods, your reels, to get to the places you need to fish to, fish to, it's really very important to prepare your bait so it works effectively, especially in the colder months like today at Barston, where it's a bit cold, every bite's gonna be essential. So for me, preparing pellets is the first stage. There's lots and lots of different ways of doing this, but for me, I like to do it so I over soak the pellets. So when I get up in the morning, I get straight out in the garage, I put my pellets in water in the strainer, leave them for three to four minutes, let them really absorb all the water. Um, and then I'll take them out of the water and just leave them in the strainer and let them dry off for about half an hour. And then before I get in the motor to set on my journey, I'll put them in a big bucket like this one so they can just perfectly air out and take on all the water and all the air. And what you'll find is when you get to the venue and you check your pellets, rather than being really sticky and tacky, they lose all this, so they go very loose, but they hold their shape, they're very workable. And I prefer them like this. So if you're pole fishing, for example, nothing better than tapping in little micros that are nice and strong and will hold their shape. But for the method, obviously you want them to stick around the feeder. What I like to use is the mainline sticky cell liquid. Now this is perfect in the winter months. It just adds an extra bit of scent to the already flavors on the pellet. And also it makes them a little bit sticky and tacky so they break down and hold around the feeder perfectly. So all I do is literally get my pellet, give it a squirt in. You don't need an awful lot. This is quite potent. It's really, really strong and it's got a lovely scent. These are the two millimeter activated cell pellets. So these have already got a cell flavor on them and this just enhances it all. So I'm basically just mixing that round, letting it go through, letting it soak on top of the pellets. And then within a few minutes, I just leave them to stand and you'll already notice that they're starting to stick together also. And you get that lovely smell flavoring, which for me is the number one in the winter months. Cracking. So that's the pellets perfectly prepared. They will work all day long, no problem whatsoever. But fishing a place like Barston where it gets heavily carp fished, I like to give them that little edge. And that comes for me in the form of some ground down boilie. These are the essential cell freezer baits. And what I've done is I've put these in a blender at home and I've just broken them down into quite a fine but bitty powder. And what I like to do is add them to some of the pellets to give the pellets a little sparkle, a little edge, another scent of flavour and something for the fish to spot on this heavily coloured bottom. And what you find is everyone's fishing this colour of pellets, so it's nice to give them a little hint of difference to get your own edge. So all I simply do, these are out the blender, I put them in the freezer once I've done it and then on the morning of the match or my session, I just pull them out and they just defrost nicely before the session. But again, because you can, why not add a little bit of essential cell? So what I do is I just get the small amount that I'm going to use. I don't do it all in one go because you might want to change the amount you've got in your feed as the session goes on. You might find that the natural pellets are working better on their own. So I just do a little bit at a time, see how it's working and go from there. So we've got a bit of boily crumb in there. Just to give it an edge, I'll put a little bit of the essential. Again, this is just the pure stick mix. This isn't available in the match range, but in the cart range, lasts you forever. Really great additive for me perfect in the winter. I tend to use the hybrid and the more meaty flavors in the summer. So there we go, I've just mixed that in there. You've just got a tiny little bit of damp down boily crumb there and it's really, really strong in scent. And then what I'll do is I'll add my pellets to it until I'm happy with the amount, with the concentration. So what I'm looking for is just some orange flecks in my mix. So there you go, as you can see, there's probably, I'd say, 70, 30 there, 70% 70 pellets and just a little bit of colour. And again, that will just help bind together and you get the perfect, nice little bait pocket on the bottom, which they can home in on and hopefully find your hook bait nice and quickly. That's the feed bait all prepared and ready to go. Let's go and sit on the box, get the feeder out there and have a little play with some hook bait.
Well, there we go. We're about half an hour into the session. We've had a great start. We've had a few skimmers, a couple of F1s, a lovely big mirror carp, and this one, lovely little F1. Bites are always welcome this time of year. We basically started this session at 50 meters with no bites, and I quickly moved out to 60. By just keeping an eye on the water and seeing where the fish are showing, you literally, this time of the year, your best bet is to follow them out there or wherever they're showing, get on top of them. Tactics couldn't be any more simpler, really. I've started on hybrid feeder, literally using the 12 foot Aventus feeder rod. So I've got a range up to about 90 meters. So I've got the 45 gram hybrid on there. That's the perfect feeder for what I like to start a session on. It's a nice amount of bait and you know the feeder will fly through the air and get to the spot really comfortably. As you can see, that one was on a little pink wafter. That's the eight mil one. This is a new one from Mainline, which is coming out shortly. And I've just literally buried it in the feeder as I would, which is really, really simple. All I do is put a first layer on the hybrid feeder. This is really important how you load this feeder so your bait's, on, so your bait's presented effectively on the bottom. So my first layer always goes in nice and tight. Literally fill it up to the rim so the bait's all there, nice and tight in the feeder. And then I fold my hook length over so the point of the QM1 hook is, is facing upwards and then I just press it slightly so it all holds in position. So you've got your boilie and your hook all on show. Then I get a tiny little layer and just put that over the top and that will just protect it on the cast. You'll get a tiny bit coming out as it enters the water. There's no getting around that, but you know when that bait and that hook bait's on the bottom, it's all gonna be perfectly presented on top of the feeder. As I said, I caught the foot. We're catching on pink ones at the minute. I've got a big range of baits, which I like to take with me. As the session progresses, this could change and I'll talk you through all the different tactics. Also, another key thing, the fish don't always want so much bait, especially this time of year. By chucking this big 45 gram feeder in, you could spook them off. So I've got some smaller feeders and some different types of feeders to try as the session goes on. So we'll try and keep them fish coming. I'm gonna have another cast and see how we get on. So here at Barston, as you can see, it's usually quite coloured and, and today's no different really. It's a very shallow lake, gets a lot of wind on it, so the water's churned up an awful lot and also there's plenty of fish in here to stir it up to. So I usually have a standard rule for this. I usually start off on the mid-range wafter, sort of like an eight millimetre, which will suit a 12 or 14 QM1 style hook perfectly. Um, my my go-to choice at the moment, um, and this is just from learning what you're getting bites on and whatever people are catching on. It's always worth speaking to people, see what they're catching on, see the colours and going from there yourself. But for me, the tuna pinks work really, really well in 8mm, sit lovely with a 14 or 12 QM1. It just pops it up just a little bit. So when that fish comes over it, sucks it in, it's on. My second choice is the pineapple. This really works well with my mix. Obviously it's got little yellow dots in. So I like to call this like matching the hatch when they're really feeding on that loose feed bait, a yellow hook bait built in there is perfect. Works really, really well. And then you've got the white when it's hard in the winter and you don't want much bait, a white wafter. For me, imitates bread. It's presented perfectly, works well every time. And then you've got the orange. The orange from the main line at the moment is quite a dull, subtle orange, like a bit washed out. So again, when it's difficult and those fish are wary of a really bright hook bait, these ones work superb. What we've also got now with Mainline, after a year of the, the dumbbells being out, we get people's feedback, anglers feedback, and they really, really wanted a smaller and a larger version of the dumbbells for different situations. But what we've done also, is you'll probably notice, here's the new six mil dumbbells, and this is the orange. As you can see, these are chocolate orange flavor, but we've gone with a more vibrant color. And the main reason for this is the majority of places these are being used are coloured water. So for me and for the results we've been having, a more vibrant hook bait, nine out of 10 times will give you that edge. It's not always the right answer, but to help the masses, this is the colour that will get you a bite. So again, in the six mils now, updating the eight mils and the 10 mils, you'll get all the vibrant fluoro colours. So the yellow, as you can see that against the original yellow, let me just pop that down. 
is a lot brighter. Don't get me wrong, there'll be occasions when this sort of more washed out colour will work better than this, but as a rule, in coloured commercial waters, a brighter hook bait will get you more bites. The white and the pink have stayed very similar to what they are in the 6mm. As you can see, those colours work really well. I think pink always looks a bit washed out and works very well on pressured waters. So that's that. If you're catching or waiting for bigger fish, a 10mm hook bait can always be good. There's some there. They've got the Captivate Scopex and pineapple flavour on. They're really, really rich. It takes the shine off them, but it's a really good hook bait. There's never a right or wrong colour, but to have a good selection and sort of read what's happening on the day, you can really put more fish in the net by trying to think about what's happening and having the right baits, making the right choices, you'll definitely catch more fish. And there we go, probably had a 20 minute spell of not a great deal, an odd liner, as if they've backed off a little bit. I've just swapped down to the smaller feeder, so a small amount of the same bait, and I've dropped my hook size and my bait size. And yes, it's not an F1, it's not a carp, but it's another fish that's coming in the net and it's a nice skimmer. As you can see, little bright orange boily on that one. And the very, very small hybrid feeder. But there you go, in competition, that'd be a result because that's a two pound fish that we didn't have. And just changing the feeder size and hook bait, as you can see, it's still bait in the feeder it created a very, very quick bite. So there you go, one little change and success. A great little tip to give your dumbbells an even bigger boost is to use the Captivate dies. These are really, really good. They add extra colour and even stronger scent to it. They're not just a dye. The scent and the smell that these have got is fantastic. So it's just a simple case of getting your wafters, small little tub, and just adding a few drops, giving them a good shake give them a good shake and it just puts a nice little coating on them and gives them God, like a real potent smell. So it puts a nice coating on, the coating's very thin so it won't affect the buoyancy of the wafter but you get that extra little bit of scent and smell. And for me, on my wafters, I love using the yellow on the actual yellow pineapples. Just gives them a little tiny different colour and that intense smell and then I love to put the red, which is krill, which we don't do any wafters in, but if you add that to the white cell wafters, look at that for colour. So they still waft, but they've got a real deep colour of red. These are really good, especially in the winter when it's crystal clear. This is one of my go-to hook baits. Really like using those. And the smell again, disgusting krill, but works a treat. And then finally, for the chocolate wafters, these are quite a subtle hook bait, work really well when it's, you know, not easy, it's quite difficult, but by adding the chocolate flavoured Captivate, it really brings them alive. They're more vibrant in colour, really rich in smell, and again, they've caught me lots and lots of fish. So for me, Captivate colours, you can leave them in your bag, just add an odd one to your rook baits, gives you a real nice edge. While we're waiting for another bite, <clears throat> it's not always wafters which will bring you success. It's always good to have other change baits as well. And a few different ones that I like for different reasons, I'll show you. So one, punch lunchy meat. Absolute winner, very good in the summer. But in the winter, when you need a slightly softer bait, a bait that's gonna attract more fish, this is a great bait for skimmers and other species. The mainline lunchy meat works really well because you're still getting the flavours, the smells you'd get from a wafter, but you've got a different presentation and a different texture. So well worth a go. 
Another thing I do like to do, as, I'm, as I touched on earlier, I do like to put the essential cell ground boilie in my mix. And it works really well, it just gives you that hint, that little bit extra. And when the fish are really feeding well, I always keep a handful of the baits separate from my grinder. And all I do is put one on the hair, trim it up so it's more, a little bit smaller than 10 mil, which that, I find that a little bit too big as it is. Trim it up, make it a funny looking shape, and when you're catching lots of fish, it just imitates the little flex that you've got in your bait and they home in on it. So this is my go-to when I'm bagging, I'm catching fish on a wafter or anything, matching the hatch to something very similar will make you catch even quicker. Going along with that as well, something you must always take, you're putting pellets around your feeder, so a little tub with an array of different colored, different shaped pellets. Again, similar to matching the hatch, these are always good for getting you a bite. And sometimes when it's hard, a nice little hard bait like that works really well. Again, you can take other things as well. A great winter bait is punch bread. That always works well on hair. Still using the same mix in the feeder. So what I like to call a fish catching bait, just a single maggot will get you a bite as well. So don't be scared to take a few maggots, either putting them straight on the hook or banding them in a hair works really well. But that's the few different baits that I like to take on the session, as well as my main attack wafters. And hopefully, nine out of 10 times throughout your session, you'll keep putting fish on the bank. Keep into the session now. Rod's gone round again. The key thing has been today is to find what they want, catch as many as you can on it. So early on in the session, we we're about 60 meters, catching on a bright pink bait with a decent sized feeder. Then it went quiet in the middle of the session. So I tried different hook baits and found a smaller feeder and a smaller wafter was the key to get a few bites in that tricky period. And then I've just gone further out again, gone back on the bigger feeder, back to a similar hook bait that I was on to earlier on. Tip's gone round and again, another decent fish. Look at that. It goes, nice little carp. Oh no, it's a big F1. Look at that, stunning. <coughs> what a way to finish the session. Let's have a look at this beauty. Absolute beauty of an F1. It looks like he's made from glass. So bringing in them changes, giving yourself some options cold winter's day, fish on the bank. Look at that, matching the hatch with a bright orange 10 mil wafter to finish on. And what a fish. Happy with that.